let's find the exact value of the tangent of 255 degrees. Well, this isn't on my unit circle. So we're gonna have to come up with either a double or a half angle relating to that and use one of our trig identities. Um, and so what does 255 equal? Well, think about what maybe subtracting 45 from that is gonna give you 210, ooh, 210 and 45. Does that work? Yeah. So it's 210 plus 45. 210 degrees, which is on my unit circle, plus 45 degrees, which equals 255. So we're going to rewrite this as the tangent of 210 plus 45. And let's look at our formula. So there's my formula at the bottom there from your formula sheet. So every time I see 210, that's like my A here. I'm going to write my, I'm going to write that in there. And every time I see B or 45, I'm going to write the B in there. So my equation would be tangent of 210 plus tangent of 45 all over 1 minus tangent 210 times tangent of 45. Okay, so let's look at my unit circle. Well, first of all, tangent is sine over cosine, right? So sine over cosine equals tangent. So I'm thinking unit circle 45 degrees the sine and the cosine are the same. So the tangent is just one, right? So these things both turn into one. 210 is a little bit diff more difficult. So 210, let's look at my unit circle. 210 is right here. And the tangent would be the sine, which is your x coordinate or y coordinate over the cosine. So negative one half all over negative root three over two flip and multiply so that's just equal to positive 1 over root 3 positive 1 over root 3 is my is this so this is 1 over root 3 that's 1 over root 3 so let's just rewrite it down here so I've got 1 over root 3 plus 1 all over 1 minus 1 over root 3 times 1 okay now ready for the great trick Here's the trick that a lot of people don't realize that they can do. It makes your life so much easier. It's called clearing fractions. Whenever you have fractions in either an equation or in complex fraction like this, if you multiply everything on the top and the bottom or both sides by the least common denominator, which is root 3, if you multiply the top by root 3 and the bottom by root 3, right? I can do that, right? All I'm doing is like, simplifying this. It's kind of like one half is equal to three six because you're multiplying by three on the top and the bottom, right? That's all I'm doing. So I'm literally going to take this and multiply it into here and here and multiply it into here and here. And it makes this such an easy problem compared to doing it the other way. That would give me the root three and the root three cancel out in the first one, right? See that? And then the one times root three is just root three. Got it? And how it happens on the bottom. What's the th root 3 times 1? It's root 3. And what happens when I multiply this here? I'll do this with gray. What happens when I multiply this here? What happens to the root 3 on the top, right? And the root 3 on the bottom, what happens to those? They cancel out and I just get minus 1. Now your teacher might be okay with that as your final answer, or they might want you to simplify it because I have a radical in the denominator. So you're not quite done if they want you to simplify it more. Do you remember the trick for this? Multiply the top and bottom by root three plus one, which is the conjugate of this. I just changed the sign there, but I'm gonna have to do that on the top also. Got it? And now foil it out. Remember foiling it out? that, 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 that. So this is gonna equal root three, that's the first two things, plus root three times root three is three. Um, plus one, because that's the one times the one, plus another root three. So that'll simplify in a second. And this on the bottom, it does, it's much better. Because that and that make three, but the, the outside and the inside cancel each other out. Because you're foiling it, right? And then it's just minus one. 
So your answer is add the common terms up there at the top. Your answer is going to be 4 plus 2 root 3 all over 2, which actually simplifies. You can factor 2 out of the top. That actually equals 2 plus root 3. So that's the simplified version of this right there, which they probably want you to do. Now you could have done that. At this stage, you could have done that by just multiplying common denominator. And maybe you'd find that a little bit easier, but I actually prefer to do it, that method. If you wanted to do it the other method, let me just show you how that works and see if you like that better. At this point, you instead of multiplying by the common denominator, clearing the fraction like I was telling you earlier, what you could do at this point is you could get a common denominator here and make this, let me turn to purple, make this a root three over root three and make this a root three over root three. And so you would have one plus root three over root three on the top and you'd have root three minus one over root three on the bottom. And how do I multiply a fraction or how do I divide by a fraction? I take this and do what? Multiply by the reciprocal. And what are you going to end up with? Those cancel out. You're going to end up with that same thing that I had a second ago. And then you're still going to have to do that trick to get it down to this. So that's why I prefer to clear the fraction. It's just an easier step in my opinion. And if you want to check your answer, like I said, plug this in your calculator. Plug this in your calculator and make sure that they're the same decimal.